right, everybody, what you have in front of you is a 1976 Honda CB500T, and this is actually going to be a really cool fabrication project for my friend Thomas of Mile Zero Racers. He's currently building a Honda CB450, wants to do a mono shock on it, so what he did is he contacted me, and I have sourced this bike to do all the fabrication on, build the kit, so to speak. So in this video, what you're going to be seeing is a lot of fabrication, a lot of explanation as to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it on this conversion. It's going to be a lot of fun. So sit back and enjoy the video. Well, we have this thing pretty damn tore down as far as we really need to go we are going to cut some brackets out of this thing to get started but of course we have a pile of parts that we no longer need and uh unfortunately cb 500 parts are worth nothing i mean there's multiple mufflers and crossovers on ebay for like 18 bucks of free shipping and they won't sell that seat in good condition is like 30 bucks it's just unfortunately they're worthless so i got these things up on marketplace right now and i'm getting ready to load them in the van because i've already got somebody who needs them which is awesome because i'd rather give them away for free to somebody who needs them than trying to just spend a bunch of time on you know getting rid of them and stuff like that because they're really unfortunately they're not worth much right now i think these things are kind of underrated and uh i don't know they'll come into their own eventually but uh yeah this thing's looking Nice and bare right now. Tomorrow we are going to work on uh, starting to kind of mock things up. Now, of course, a crucial thing here is going to be just taking measurements and making sure that this thing is the same as my friend's bike. He has a CB450, but if you look up the parts, fishes, and stuff like that, all of the bolts and all the hardware is the same between the two models, so I assume everything is going to be a match. But we're going to go ahead and take a bunch of measurements here. So inside, inside on the swing arm, exactly 9 inches. And then our total swing arm length, what I usually do is I go from the center of the pivot bolt to about the center of the window here. It gives me kind of a, a good range. So that's exactly 17 inches. And then of course our outside width on the shock mounting tabs. So that is 10 and a quarter. I've already measured the pivot width, so I'll put that up here because I can't remember it right now. But uh, let's go ahead and start mocking up some tube. Okay, let's go ahead and open up what we're going to use as one of the key pieces to our suspension. That is going to be a hoop. Now this is going to be a non-linkage style mono shock setup. particular hoop actually comes from uh, Tough Side Seats or Chapel Customs. There we go. So you can see here, 
I, uh, I, I wanted my friend to get one with a little bit of a taper just to kind of help fit inside the frame and kind of hug the tire a little bit more. And then to pair with this, what we're going to be doing is tying these legs into the actual lower shock mounts on the swing arm. And to do that, we've got some shock tabs. So those are basically going to weld onto the end there. And then on this point, we're going to have our shock attach point, our lower or rear shock attach point, and then the shock will lay flat like that. So there's not going to be a whole lot of room. We'll have the tire coming right in here. And so we have to kind of mock everything up, get everything tight, and make sure it fits. All right, guys, now you can see the tube is just kind of set on here. I want to give you guys a visual and an explanation on what we're doing and why we're doing it. So we have the rear shock tabs. I've mentioned we're going to be using these. Those will sit just like that. The tube will weld to this bracket. Now, in a factory setup, of course, you have the shocks mounted right here, and that is putting all of the pressure from the axle into the shock tab in a vertical form just like that. Now on modern bikes, the swing arms are a lot beefier because you're just using that as like a torsional type load. And those are braced a lot of times. So this one to help transfer that kind of energy or that stress, we're using this bar and that's gonna extend up to about here. And then we're gonna have our top shock mount and that's gonna go about right there. Now we're also going to tie in right here with an adjustable kind of rod end and that's going to actually help change the spring rate and get it dialed in. And so that'll be like the cool adjustment point for that. I will have to cut out this bracket right here, which is fine. And I'll probably request that he uh, make another, maybe like a tie-in point from the lower frame out here up to the neck. Um, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, that might help add a little bit of rigidity to this thing, but we'll see. So you can kind of get an idea of what we're gonna be doing here. So the key measurements we have down there, and then I need to get with him and figure out kind of what tire he's going to be using so I can build this around it the best I can and make sure we have all uh, good clearance on everything.
All right, here is the game plan. You can see we uh, welded up those clevises. We've got those modified to accept a bolt and double as a spacer. So those are mounted and we have the tube just kind of setting on here. I spread that out just a hair, but we're gonna have to go quite a bit further because of how far down or how far up the, uh, the meeting point will be. Now I have the wheel slid as far forward as it will go. I have it squared up in here. I've taken measurements to make sure everything on the swing arm is square. And I'm going to mock up this tube around the tire. Now I'm going to uh, give it kind of like, I'm going to give it some adequate space using uh, something like this. And in talking with the eventual um, owner of this kit, it sounds like we're the way we're going to do it, we're going to have plenty of room for tire clearance with a uh, potential different tire and rim setup. So if you look at the factory swing arm clearance up here, it's it's pretty dang tight. You can't even fit your finger in there. So if we build something to kind of a similar gap, that means uh, you know if it doesn't fit this, it's not going to fit that either. So it's not going to be like uh, just the kit that doesn't fit, if that makes any sense. But another thing that we did is uh, you notice I have, instead of the swing arm hanging by that wire, I have it on a two by four. And that is the equivalent of basically another half inch in length gained in the shock. So we're gonna be mocking everything up on there. So once we get the tube mounted, then we have our measurement for our shock. So I know that's kind of a lot of information to take in, but uh, it's all gonna come together and it'll be all awesome. So. I'm going to work on maybe bending this out a little bit more and then I will go ahead and get it cut, tacked on, and we will be well on our way. Okay, I've got the tube spread out. It is the perfect width for both clevises here. And I have it kind of centered on the front and then I have it spaced with something that's equivalent to the gap down there. And now we can determine where we need to cut. Now we should be able to actually make this uh, just a straight 90 degree cut, which is gonna be awesome. So I'm going to mark that. Draw an arrow, cut to this side, and then this we will also mark with an L for left. And that way we continue to keep our uh, orientation from here out. Okay, now we can cut. So I just took some measurements and it looks like we're exactly 14 inches from the end to our cut line on both sides. So that's good, that means we're square. Tubes cut, cleaned, and we are ready to get this thing mounted. about as equal as it's ever, ever going to look.
So as you see here, I have the ratchet strap on the wheel and I'm going to actually lift it, um, kind of simulating cycling it through its motion here. So we'll get, we'll lift it up at least three inches and then see what our measurement is here as far as how, how much it changes. Cause right now I'm basing this on, oh, estimating probably like an 11 inch eye to eye shock, maybe 10 and a half. So we'll lift this up and see what our, like our compressed figure is and see if that's even possible. four inches of travel there. So here's something. What I'm thinking is I want to have this bar aimed straight at the shock or straight at our top mounting tab on full compression. Otherwise, now it's going below. So that would mean our, our shock would start to arc down, changing the spring rate. Okay, so that gets us about eight inches. And this is raised up, actually now it's as far as it can go, it's actually contacting this tube here. So that gives us a baseline where we kind of need like maybe a potential stopper or something like that. But that's, that's actually quite a bit of travel. I doubt we would need to go that far. Okay, now you can't really see this spot right here, but estimating my shock length, I would like to see 10 and a half inches eye to eye, assuming I mount it in line with the actual bar. And that's being repositioned in line once we're at the top of our stroke. So let me go ahead and raise this thing up again. at four inches of travel and that brings that down to approximately eight inches so what that means is for the wheel to travel four inches vertically it needs to travel or compress the shock um, two and a half inches so I don't think that's too bad we'll see if that's a possibility and again like we don't we probably don't even need to go this high I mean that's that's pretty excessive right there so it's good to know that kind of stuff though. All right guys, here you were looking at CB360 swing arm because we have a little bit of a change of plans. Now, working with my friend here, he has a CB450. This is a CB500. What is the difference? Well, we don't know all the differences, but at least one of them is the total swing arm length. So if we look at this bike, the CB500 from about the middle of the axle adjustment window to the swing arm pivot is 17 inches long. It turns out that the CB450 swing arm is right at about 16 inches, making it an inch shorter. Now, another critical measurement is going to be our shock mount to swing arm pivot length because we need that big bar that goes across. So if that is shorter, we're already minimizing the available room that we have from here to here where we want our top shock mount. Now on this particular swing arm, again, CB500, we're looking at right at 15 inches from the shock mount to the swing arm pivot. On the CB450 swing arm, we're looking at 14 inches. So every freaking millimeter up here was critical 
and it turns out that the CB450 is an inch shorter, meaning that bar that I made would be an inch shorter in relation to this point right here, meaning that piece we made would definitely not be usable. So our solution, a CB360 swing arm. Now this came as a recommendation from him because of some forum scrounging. We're looking at 18 inches from the swing arm pivot to the center of the axle adjustment window and then our critical from the shock mount to the actual swing arm pivot we're looking at 16 inches which means we're gaining an inch basically in every direction that's always a good thing so the question that you guys are probably having is does this directly fit well let's figure it out All right, looking at the swing arm pivots, this is the CB360, this is the CB500 slash 450. They are identical. So that tells me this should be a direct bolt-on. Looking at the swing arms themselves, very close. But the difference is here at the end, of course, the dimensions in which I've talked about already. So let's go ahead and try to put this one on. Direct fit. No problem. Okay, the 360 swing arm fits great, but we do have our first fitment issue, and that is the axle diameter. So the 360 dropouts here are two millimeters smaller than the actual 500 and 450. So larger axle diameter, slight oversight, but my friend is planning on using a CB350 hub, so all hope is not lost. Now, I do want to continue mocking this thing up, and for my own comfort, knowing kind of wheel travel, stuff like that, I want to have a wheel on this thing instead of just continuing to mock up the actual shock on this thing. So because the 500 wheel will not fit on the swing arm, I'm going to actually modify a 3 quarter inch piece of aluminum to act as a dummy axle. So I will just turn down the areas that we need so this thing will actually slide into the dropouts like normal. And the outer diameter here is just smaller than the original 500 axle. So we'll just use this in place of it as a kind of like, again, like a dummy mock-up one. What's interesting though, is the spacing, the width of everything is identical. So the 500 wheel will fit on. The only difference is the axle diameter. So the actual like chain adjusters and stuff, they all line up perfect. But of course the axle diameter is too big now if you had access to a mill, you could chuck this thing up and actually open up your dropout. You just want to make sure you would do that in a very precise manner. You can imagine a scenario here that if you took too much material off say the top versus this side where you took maybe more off the bottom and got it to fit, your wheel or your axle would be cockeyed in there and the wheel would not be square to the actual swing arm. So it would be very important that you would chuck this thing up and get it done in a precise manner. So that's just, you know, that's just uh, kind of an added challenge. Other than that though, our tube that we made fits perfect. There was no modification needed there. Went right on just like the other one. And now we have an inch more clearance between here and here. So I'm going to work on this dummy axle and we'll get right back with you.
Get her in the ballpark. There we go. All right, now that the hoop is on, I need to tie this thing into the swing arm itself. That way we can lock in our adjustment up and down. And then to tie it together, I have a Heim joint kit. So uh, I picked this thing up off Amazon. We're just trying to figure out something that is gonna be easy should we make this a kit in the future. So what you get with a Heim joint kit is not that piece. You get a left and a right thread. This one's left hand thread, actual Heim joint. So this is a spherical rod end. Okay, so that can rotate around, it's really sturdy. And then they come with these right here, and these are threaded all the way through. And once assembled, what that allows you to do is actually adjust the length. So let me go ahead and assemble this, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, we have our two Heim joints here. So this is gonna be adjustable. And what we're doing is we're tying this together with a piece of tubing I've machined down. Now it will be my goal to source something that is pretty much pre-fit, but the reason I'm going with what I'm going with here is to try to minimize the amount of work required. So this is exactly 40 millimeters long and that puts me about right there. So there's a little bit of space. Now, being that we have a lot of unused real estate in these threads, we could cut this down a little bit, but I like the idea of keeping this thing nice and stable. So I've beveled the edges, that slides in there like that, and then that gives us two nice weld seams on either end. So we're just gonna fill that with a nice TIG weld there and be very solid. And then whenever you go to adjust this thing, you just crack the nuts loose, you can spin the inside and it will either lengthen or shorten this whole section here. Now, once we have this thing welded, we will assemble it in the bike like so. So we will have that lower mount that we will build on the swing arm, and then we will build a mount on the actual tube itself. And by raising or lowering this, we will be able to both adjust the ride height as well as the actual spring rate itself beyond the adjustment that the shock has built in. So all science and stuff like that. All right, guys, here is a quick tip for just making a simple bracket, kind of how I do it. So we have a round surface here. It's not really easy to trace around, but we need to figure out our spacing and all that. So what I do is I always just find a washer that is similar to what I'm working on. And in this instance, the washer is slightly bigger than the actual housing here. So that's perfect. That's gonna give us a little bit of extra space. Let's assume that we would have a weld joint in that corner. So that leaves room for that. And using a washer, we can just trace it onto our paper, have it met up at the bottom here and then we just have the circle that gives us our inside. And then from there, we can just kind of trace our edges and that way we get it to look like exactly how we want. So this will be about like that, all right. On this side, it is cut straight down because this is gonna be near the inner curve of the swing arm. So we're gonna scoot this back you know, as far as possible. And then just tapering it out a little bit on the front is gonna give us just that much more weld surface to uh, build in some strength. And that's it. Now, another example of how I use these washers would be, let's say you're making a bracket out of this flat bar and you need to have a hole near the end for whatever reason. You find a washer that relatively matches up. Okay, we can meet it as close as we can to all three sides. You have your radius right there. You have your center mark. And then once you trim it to shape, you have the correct radius located for that hole. And it just makes an overall, uh, just a more attractive piece, a more professional looking piece. And it is just that simple, just doing something that simple, trimming the edges, rounding it, instead of just leaving it flat, makes it look that much better. And you carry that idea throughout the bike and it's just gonna up the quality that much more.
Okay, as you see, we have our lower bracket just tacked in place. That's all the farther we'll get with that because we're going to end up cutting it off. But now it's time to mock up the actual bracket here to mount both the lower linkage as well as the shock. So over on the bench, I've already drawn up a bracket. Let me explain it. All right, hopefully this is going to be clear enough, but we have three basic circles here or radiuses. Now the upper shock will mount over here. I have the line centered and I have 50 millimeters of space between the two. I feel like that's going to be enough to kind of get me where I need to go as far as bar placement and overall like rearward location of the shock itself. So I think this is going to be fine here. And I drew this diameter based off of the end of the shock and this happens to be like 32 millimeter. So I just mimicked that down here just for consistency. And then down here you can see this kind of dashed line that represents the outer diameter of the actual heim joint because I want to make sure I have enough space for everything around there. So the heim joint will stick out a little bit past the outer edge here, but that'll be fine. And then here is the critical part. This is this represents the actual hoop on the bike that we made earlier. And this is going to be where we are welding. So I want to try to have as much weld surface as I can. We're going to have two of these plates. Now, uh, what I'm thinking is because the shock is going to be pushed in this direction, we're going to have the most force on the top of the tube. So I extended this line down, and this will represent the tube, of course. And this is going to be a big uh, stressor area here. So this is where a lot of our force is going to be transferred. So I wanted to make sure we had weld in this spot. So here I brought it down and then I kind of cheated it a little bit instead of going straight across. I went a little bit further and just accounting for maybe a little bit of slop. Whenever I cut this relief out, we should be able to slide this thing over the tube at a little bit past 180 and then we will cut it here. The rest of the bracket will extend down and meet up with this circle. So it should be really good looking and we have our centers here. We should be able to easily duplicate this bracket, but for now, let's go ahead and uh, cut this thing out in steel. I'm going to use 3 16 again, just like I did for the lower bracket. We'll go from there. Okay, you saw me drill the holes in these plates here, clean them up a little bit, got this thing fitting exactly how I want, and I think we're going to be good. I did have to make one little bushing spacer for the top here, so a little bit of a delay, but that's alright. So once I kind of force this down, it closes that gap there, it'll make a nice weld joint. I have a zip tie and some uh, safety wire just kind of holding the, the top shock kind of where I want it in space. So all of this is going to be adjustable though, but I think this is going to work great. So I want this to be rotated a little bit further forward and we'll make that work. So I'm going to get the welder back out and we will start tacking this in place.
Okay, I have the design for my top mount here. Now what I've done is I've positioned the shock. I've used the linkage to kind of dial it in and just get this thing at least setting up front where I want it. So my shock bracket, I'm going to extend down and basically what I did is I marked about where I wanted this. And this is gonna be a simple 90 degree cut. And then this is our long side. So just taking a few measurements starting with here and then roughing out how, how long it needs to be gives me this dimension. And then taking a few eyeball measurements, narrowing it down, getting the shock location down should uh, be pretty damn close, should work. And then what I'm thinking is uh, with the two plates extending to the side, I'm going to tie in a flat piece right here and that will actually contact this uh, original round tube for the, for the spine. And that will be like the stopper. So assuming that piece would be pre-made, you would just take it and go boop and it would just fall right into place. We'll probably likely also put like a little bottom tab on here so it locks it in. But you're basically gonna be lining up this tab with the uh, edge of the frame here right in the middle. And luckily, this tube, the actual frame tube here, is 30 millimeters in diameter. And our shock linkage, our bushings that this thing comes with, has a, an outer diameter or an outer width of 30 millimeters. So our plates are gonna fit perfectly on the side of this tube and then butt up and it's like no oddball bushings or anything like that, it's gonna fit great. So I have my little bracket designed here, two and a half inches on this side five inches on the long side, and then this ended up being, you know what, I never measured this side yet, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, you get the idea. And then this was just taken off of a couple eyeball measurements, narrowed down for the shock pivot mount, and then we'll have a little tab up top. So as of now, let's go ahead and cut this thing out. Okay, I have my upper shock bracket here, and we're getting ready to tack on basically my locator uh, stopper plate here. Now, this is going to just make contact with the existing frame. The width is uh, not 30 millimeters, like I said, but it's actually 31.8. So I had to add a little washer in here that I found that was exactly the right width. But, you know, small changes in the grand scheme of things. So this thing slides on there nice, but now I'm getting ready to and weld that on this will become one solid piece and then we can go ahead and kind of set this on the frame but we should be able to get this thing looking pretty good real quick I got the bracket welded up as you saw and now I have it just set in place and I think it turned out really cool the little top stopper piece here I know you're not gonna be able to see it but we'll put a close up now that worked really great as a guide to just go ahead and install the bracket what also worked well is just getting the shock kind of set in here bolted up in the front and then I can use the lower adjustment here to put pressure on it so whenever I go to actually weld this in or somebody goes to weld it in in the future you can kind of dial that in get your pressure set that'll lock it in place and then you just proceed to weld now there was a little bit extra clearancing I did need to do and that was just on the weld for this tube meeting this tube and that was pretty minor but we're gonna cover that with weld anyway or not me on this bike but you know my uh, my friend Thomas so all he'll have to do is clear off a little bit more paint and you got two great weld seams per side and then the only other concern was uh, basically putting another lateral support in here you could make it really um really simple you could do a flat plate here and then you know cope it to match the tube there that would give you a lot more weld joint i don't know if it's really necessary and then the other the other thing I'm, I'm considering is that you would actually trap a lot of moisture in that. So definitely don't want to, you know, have a spot where water can gather in, in your frame. So, you know, it, it can remain open. I think it's going to have plenty of strength up top here. No real risk of deflection. So, yeah, I think, I think that might just have to do it. But for me, tomorrow I will go ahead and I'm just going to literally just put one tack weld on either side on the bottom 
and that's going to be enough to let me kind of bounce up and down on this thing and we'll probably final weld the um, actual mount on the tube there this thing's pretty much done All right, I just tacked on this bracket, and I think that's all I'm gonna need to uh, kind of let this thing just sit under its own weight. Should be plenty fine. All of our uh, force is gonna be pressed up into like the actual stopper, and then this under here just kind of like rotating is under very minimal stress. So I'll be able to just keep you know two tacks on it, and then cut it back off to send to my friend. So for now, what I'm going to do though is uh, pull the whole uh, bar off here. And then I'm gonna you know, put my spacers back in, get this clamped in tight, and then just weld these brackets solid because that's something that's just one less step he, he will have to do. And then I'll put it back on, we'll jump up and down on this thing and uh, watch it cycle through its, its suspension. Should be cool. spring itself is very stiff, but it does cycle. All right, this thing is looking good. I really, really like how it turned out. And uh, from just putting some weight on the back and stuff, I can tell that this spring is too stiff, which is actually a good thing because you would rather be too stiff right now than too soft. You can still ride it with that and you can dial it in from there and obviously i can still adjust the preload but i can tell the actual spring rate is still a bit too high but you have some dampening adjustment up here and then of course you can kind of fine tune that spring rate along with the ride height with this link here so there's a lot of adjustability built into this system and i just i think it's going to work good but i am very excited for uh, my friend to get it on his bike and continue with this project but that leaves me with a cb500 here I need to come up with something to do. Now, I have long been wanting to build a scrambler out of one of these things, so here we go. Maybe uh, start a build and have one ready for next summer. Maybe throw those tires on it, who knows. Now, this project is very cool because it is for a friend who reached out for help. Now, it is okay to ask for help. In his instance, he wasn't as savvy with fabrication. He wasn't as skilled as, say, me, so it was okay. He reached out, he asked if I could maybe take this over because this is something that we really need to be safe and well-engineered. And again, asking for help is totally cool because I wouldn't be here today if I didn't ask for help and have people help me because there's been a lot of things I don't know how to do. And even like bikes I build now, I don't paint them and I don't do the upholstery because I lean on other people to do that. And even getting started with fabrication and stuff like that, you know, I had to borrow my friend's TIG welders or have them TIG stuff up for me, 
when I didn't know how and you know it you only grow from there so definitely reach out to your friends ask for help and make sure you do stuff safe that's the most important thing but again you guys can follow along with this project actually on Thomas's bike I'm going to go ahead and remove this off of this bike and go ahead and get it sent to him so definitely follow along on his channel I'll have all of his information linked in the description you guys can check it out there but if you guys have any questions of course leave them below check the description I always have a ton of information in there subscribe if you haven't already and uh, give this video a like so anyway I'm gonna sign it off I'm gonna stare at this thing and uh, dream of desert sled vibes and going and getting this thing dirty so anyway again hope you guys like this one hope to see you in the next video thanks for watching